Good morning, Team Jackson. I am driving in traffic and it's raining, uh, so I'm driving slow. And I just felt very compelled to get on and just share my heart about what St. Baldrick's truly means to me. It was eight years ago today that I announced that I was going to be shaving my head for childhood cancer research. And my reasoning was because I couldn't imagine having a child with cancer. And then I shaved my head for three years in a row because it was such a meaningful experience. And um, at the bottom of my post under St. Baldrick's, it said, this could be one of the most meaningful things you ever do, which I can't, I can't agree more. It was actually definitely one of the most meaningful things I've ever done. So I shaved my head three years in a row, and then in a sick twist of fate, Jackson shaved his head four months before he died, and God only knows he could have had cancer at the time. And so, you know, it's just one of those stories. It's just really almost unbelievable. And three months after Jackson died, I woke up with conviction that I had to have a St. Baldrick's in his memory. I knew at that time I really, it was a mission put on my heart to raise awareness about not only the lack of funding, but the lack of awareness about childhood cancer. And so I'll just be honest, I was completely out of my mind with grief and sadness, but that was the first time I really decided to make a choice to turn my pain into purpose. And our original goal was $10,000. And the reason was because I wanted to establish a hero fund, which meant it's basically another foundation that I have that means that the money we raise goes specifically to a, a, a study, a research study that I have chosen. Um, when you fundraise for St. Baldrick's, you raise funds for childhood cancer, treatments, all, you know, different awareness, but that just goes to general childhood cancer and it's used how it's needed. With the Hero Fund, um, we get to say that it, the research funds are going to research osteosarcoma, which is the type of cancer Jackson had. It is one that is listed as more rare, um, as childhood cancer is considered to be rare, um, which while I agree with that it is not common, personally it doesn't feel very rare to me because I see stories um, and I, I mean most of the time I know someone who has a child with cancer. So um, you know this last July we were able to put the funds that we had raised to a study um, presented by Dr. Betsy Young at the University of California, San Francisco. And so she is working on um, testing how immunotherapy can help uh, with the metastasis of osteosarcoma because Osteosarcoma often starts in a uh, long bone, so uh, the thigh or arm, and um, it because childhood cancer is often not caught as quickly as it needs to be, it spreads pretty fast. Osteosarcoma is one that's very known for that. It almost always, excuse me, not almost always, in a lot of cases, it spreads to the lungs. And to be honest, the prognosis for children diagnosed with osteosarcoma is not good. And, um, you know, if you know Jackson's story, you know that he was diagnosed and died six days later. His cancer had not metastasized. Um, there's a part of me that will always wish that he would have had the chance to fight the cancer. But there's another part of me that feels that he was given mercy and that he didn't have to suffer because the treatments are harsh. They're not generally made specifically for children because there isn't, there aren't a lot of drugs available, which is sad. 
and I just, if you feel any tug on your heart at all to get involved, I promise you, it, it will change, it, it will change you, it'll change you. And so I just wanted to give a little encouragement and I hope that you will join us because what we are doing is has the potential to save a child's life. And to me, that's a big deal. Thank you.